What is karma guys? So in this video I want to share with you guys the cognition I got, the understanding about, the most powerful understanding I got about karma. So before jumping into this um, Hinduism 101 video, uh, welcoming you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. So what is karma? So Swamiji said karma can be translated in so many ways, it can be mapped into English in so many ways and uh, there's not one way that is uh, wrong and the other one that is right. Um, but I've heard, you know, people uh, explain their understanding of karma, I've heard Swamiji and the most powerful cognition I got is naturally from Swamiji and um, karma is basically the thought currents from the cognitions, <clears throat> fundamental thought currents from which we operate in life, from which um, from which we operate in life. So we've heard that uh, we've heard this saying: karma comes back, right? Karma comes back. Um, some people will say, you know, the actions you do, every action is a karma and each action create a certain, uh, or creates a certain response from life and that is a karma. So uh, what, I, what, the, what clicked with me most is this. It's not about the action. The life does not respond to the action. Life responds, life reflects the space from which you act, the thought current, the cognition from which you made the decision of acting in the way you are acting. Um, so, in order to go beyond karmas, you need to bring full light and awareness inside your inner space. You need to be fully aware of each cognition that you cherish and when you make decisions you need to know from which cognition you're deciding to respond or to engage with life in the way that you engage with life. And that amount of awareness, that amount of clarity, that amount of uh, discernment, the capacity to discern what is happening inside your inner space is obviously something that uh, happens more and more when you live Swamiji's teachings, when you live, um, you know, in the teachings of the Guru, when you live Sanatana Hindu Dharma. Now, um, I think it's, it, it's most powerful because it hits the source. When I say most powerful, this understanding of karma I find is the most powerful because it hits the source of, um, of everything. And it is not a, because when people say action brings karma, there's many situations, many examples we can show where action is same, but people do not have the same results from life. So how is that possible? If action was the karma, then naturally life would respond the same to both people, but that's not necessarily the case in various situations. You know, sometimes you will see somebody who gives food uh, to somebody who's hungry because uh, but in his inner space, he was like, okay, when I will need help, I will ask help from him. And since I have helped him, he will have to help me back. That's one kind of thought current from which you can decide to give. And another thought current can be giving because you can see the suffering in the person and you, and you, don't, want, uh, you don't want that person to suffer. And you simply give so that for, by compassion and you just want to uh, make sure the person uh, does not continue to suffer in the situation that he's in. Now, um, actions have power, obviously, um, in the way that the life will respond to the, to, I mean, life will respond to the thought currents, which is the source of the decision we make. Um, and a karma is basically like also the component of karma is when we are, we, we suffer from karma. Karma is a, is something which is experienced is experienced or perhaps feared or experienced negatively when we are unaware. But when you are aware, when you when you create your life consciously, um, there's no powerlessness. And that is why I find that Swamiji's emphasis on being powerful all the time is so important. Because most of the time people will be afraid of karma. And um, and I mean, and that's not the right space because being afraid is, is a space of powerlessness. But when you're constantly powerful, 
you can engage with life and and create positive karmas ultimately when we realize we are full consciousness we are beyond all karmas we go beyond everything because super consciousness is not touched by all these things but as we exist in the manifested existence when we exist and we engage with the manifested existence we can when we are conscious the more and more we are conscious the more we create positive karmas and the more we create positive karmas the more smooth the life is when we create negative karmas uh, then naturally it makes the life a little bit more difficult and how to make sure you create positive karmas always see if what you're doing is helping and contributing to others around you the more and more your decisions and actions are contributing to others life lives enriching others lives the more it will be a positive karma when it is not when it is going to uh, deteriorate the life of people around you or take from the life of people around you then it will be a negative karma and all karmas will have to be exhausted um, until we get the liberation and that is also a point I want to bring guru right gu means remover ru means darkness remover of ignorance remover of darkness why when we have a guru why do we always offer to the guru everything we have before we use it because guru is a space beyond karma the space guru is the space which removes ignorance removes darkness darkness ignorance karma is a form of that of darkness and ignorance when you offer to guru the guru takes the karma away from the item from whatever you're doing and after that when you use it it is karma free so there is no because in many of the transactions that we have there is many Karma is associated to it means there's a lot of different forms of energies which are associated to um, everything we engage with in our life. And some of these energies negative karma, some of these energies positive karmas. But when you constantly offer to the Guru before using, you remove all the karmas and you have a kind of a karma free uh, experience with that object, with that uh, whatever, whether it is a house, a car, a new business or a gift or something you purchased, whatever it is. Um, so always, uh, from what I realize is every time you have you engage with something new, you should always first before using it, seek the blessings of the Guru, um, offer it to the Guru and allow the karmas to be uh, taken out by that space, which is Guru. Um, so yes, I guess that's what I want to share in this video. Um, that's the biggest, most powerful understanding I have about karma. Which is, uh, which is fueling me, I would say, in this, uh, in this seeking towards that, um, that ultimate. So if you have any questions or perhaps uh, how you understand karma, you can share in the comments below. I am thanking you for watching these videos, uh, these videos and uh, check the description below. A lot of interesting content and uh, like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Nityananda.